Well, I think it's great not just for the county, but for the whole region. You have to drive for hours to get to anything like this. parks and the state, they've all come together to turn this into a one wonderful family event. You can come here, you can have a Jeep or a quad or a motorcycle or anything you want. It was a fabulous ride. You have that wind in your hair and it's just open and especially while we're trying to work around COVID, what a wonderful thing for people people to be able to do and it's the only place in this part of Michigan that offers this kind of recreation. The course is very challenging if you want it to be but there's also milder places that I'll probably take my trail hawk on because I enjoyed it so much. Some of these vehicles are made for rough and mud and steep and sliding around and uh, uh, we got to do that. I got a little mud on my shirt, <laughs> and I had a, I had a, a great time. It was just fabulous. A little bit of water here and there, not much. You can get around it if you want to. But whatever kind of terrain you want here, it's here. This this ridge across northern Oakland County used to be called the Hogback Ridge. We happened to get quite a bit more snow than anybody else north or south of us because we are at such a high elevation. And we have Mount Holly, the ski hill right here. So you can imagine the size of the hills out there. They're just fabulous, they're just fun. It's just exciting, as long as you do it safely. You know, I felt like I was a teenager again. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah, this is exciting. Looking forward to this. It's uh, very heavy. You really get the sense of what these firefighters go through having to uh, actually do a ton of work carrying all this gear. You ready? All right. All right, so now you can get that blade through the hole. There you go. And when you saw, you just kind of put the other one and pull it towards you. There you go. It's amazing how fast that, that saw cuts through glass, right? It is. I mean, it's, it, it's a two layers of glass with a layer of, uh, of um, laminate. laminate between, but once you're through there, it just like cuts like butter. So we're here today to kind of uh, give you guys a little hands-on uh, putting out car fires. So let's start here. Who's my tour guide? Come on this side. Come on this side. Go ahead and open it up and we're going to start approaching in the fog for our nice turn. Uh -huh. And then and then we go back. This up and you put your chin in there, pull that up and around. Yep, pull right here. Now the hood comes up and around. So all the skin's covered now. I'm gonna turn your turn your air on here. Okay, when I put this in there, take a deep breath and you'll hear it pop open, okay? Breathe deep. Okay, now you're flowing air. Okay. What a difference. Heat and the fire really aren't the problem. For, the big challenge for us is visibility. The, the thermal imaging camera is a big aid for seeing what we're going into, especially when you can't see. We do try to you know, get low, obviously, if we need to, uh, but you move slower when you're low. So if we can, we go in standing up or crouched, and we use that uh, thermal imaging camera, and we just do our best. All right, here we go.
I'll just pull the chin away and lift it up. Chin out and then uh, there you go. Okay, awesome. All right, Woo. get a breather. That get a breather. Fun. In the first four months of 2021, over 119 brave men and women have lost their lives in the line of duty in the United States. The Protector's Memorial is a tribute to honor our fallen law enforcement officers. Joshua C. Hazeltine, Muskegon County Sheriff's Office. End of watch, November 15, 1908. Martin Samuelson, Michigan Department Charles B. Stark, Michigan State watch, Police. November 15, End of watch, 19 Johnny O. Harris, Muskegon Heights Police Department. End of watch, June Craig A. Scott, Michigan State Police. End of watch, Marion J. Calkins, Muskegon County Sheriff's Office. End of watch, Ernest W. Heikler, Muskegon County Sheriff's Office. End of watch, Scott A. Flayhive, Grand Haven Department of Public Safety. End of watch, 1213, Jonathan W. R. Ginka, Norton Shores Police Department. End of watch, Timothy J. O'Neill, Michigan State Police. End of watch, September 20, 2017. I believe we can draw inspiration from those we have lost. To be an officer, you must possess qualities that very few people have. Courage, duty, honor, professionalism, and integrity. To me, it's excitement, it's beauty, it's exercise, and it's just being able to uh, enjoy the great outdoors in a time of year that most people find cold and irritating. I find it uh, just invigorating and, and beautiful. When I drive through some of the trails, especially when I get into the heavy pine trail and the snow is hanging on them, I I just kind of I zone into a, I'm watching my trail, but I'm looking at the beauty, and I just think, you know, it's an unbelievable opportunity. It's spectacular to see what what God has created in the in the beauty of it. Take an opportunity to say, could we go for a short ride? Don't make it a long ride, make it a short ride. And when I say short, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, have them take you through some real trails just to absorb what the beauty is. Stop and visit some of the people along the trail and when you really see how much it means to them and how much the snowmobile community means to their business, it, it's just, it's, to me, it's one of the greatest sports there is. You know, we're sitting here today riding and we've had four inches of fresh snow since we started this morning at about 10.30. The trails are spectacular. It's hanging, it's drifting down. You, you almost, you almost brings you back to that, you know, the old days that you think you're on the old horse buggy and sleigh, but you're actually on a, on a snowmobile. But it, it's just beautiful to see and enjoy what uh, this is all about. So Windmill Island Gardens, we've been here since 1965 when they brought the windmill from the Netherlands. So some of the city fathers at that time uh, decided they wanted a little slice of the Netherlands here. Mm -hmm. 
Netherlands has 12 provinces, so we have all the flags here. And it's actually really neat because even some of our Dutch visitors have never seen all those provincial flags really? together. But it's neat because people will see who are from the Netherlands. They'll see, like, my grandfather's from Groningen. His flag is right up behind the building okay. here. So people will identify their province, and it's just a nice little slice. I know the decline side of the family, they immigrated to this area back at very early, like in the 1800s, mm -hmm. uh, component. Early settlers were a lot from the eastern part of the Netherlands, and the last, uh, the settlers that came later, like my family, they were from the northern and southern parts. Right. But a lot of working class people came yeah. here. So right, and the Victory side is family, they immigrated quite early too. So they, our presence has been here for six, six generations plus. Yep. I have family from a lot of different parts in the Netherlands. My great grandfather was the last to come over. The, the clothing is actually not that bad. And I still wear the wooden shoes. That's one of our biggest questions is, are these wooden shoes comfortable? They're not uncomfortable. You just have to get used to them for about a day. And then they're great. They went to the Netherlands and tried to find one, and they found actually an old broken down windmill. So they allowed us to buy that, and we were the last one. There's only two in the Western Hemisphere, ours, mm -hmm. and there's one uh, down in Aruba, a oh, Dutch really? colony. Okay. So they allowed one to go there. Theirs is now a restaurant and a bar, okay. but ours we agreed to always have open as a touring mill and as a working mill to allow people to go through. There's always been an urban legend in the community that like this windmill has some damage from World War II. That, is that a true statement or not? It's absolutely true. Wow, so the, the urban legend is truthful. Yeah, they used to use this in the Netherlands as a hideout and they'd also use it, it was high up so they could see troop okay. movements and then they would report them. So the Germans knew that and they would come by and strafe it with their fighter jets. And we actually had a guy who visited several years ago and he was one of the Dutchmen in the resistance and he had used this mill in the Netherlands to hide and evade the Germans. It's, it is neat when people visit it. A lot of people think it's just Dutch history. Mm -hmm. Engineers absolutely love this machine. It's a big machine. Mm -hmm. Agriculture people love it. It tells the story about farming, turning that into food. We can talk to people about history, about Dutch culture, really any kind of interest, we can tie it in somehow here. So some people always ask, you know, when's your peak bloom or the most bloom? They really, it's a, I call it a cascade of color over three or four weeks. We never have 100% tulips. We have earlies, lates, and mids. And any time really in late May, or late April, early May, there's always good color to be seen. We get people from all over Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio. We were getting calls this week from Mississippi and Alabama, so we just warned them to bring a jacket. Uh, it's gonna be a little chilly. Too many Michigan residents were forced to make nearly impossible decisions as a result, such as choosing between insuring their car on the one hand, or paying their rent, buying groceries, or paying for college on the other. And thousands even drove away without any insurance at all, putting themselves and everyone else on the road at tremendous risk. Hello, I'm Senator Kevin Daly. For more information on the new law, including a list of insurance agents, visit michigan.gov forward slash auto insurance. Email autoinsurance at michigan.gov or call 833-ASK-DIFFS. You can also contact my office with any questions you have at any time by emailing my office or by calling 517-373-1777.